What's happening, everybody? This is Dave from DRL's Products and Services, LLC, a mobile auto and home wash service out of McKinney, Texas. Today we're out here in Plano. I'm trying to finish up this little trailer. Actually, the trailer's finished. I was just doing some modifications. I made a video about the trailer last week. Uh, you can check out that video where I built it, you know, when I first built it from scratch. All right. Um, but I made uh, three changes today that um, I want to highlight that um, wasn't in that video, that initial video that I put out. All right, so one of the main thing is I had a T, I had a T connector right here, but um, I changed that out for a ball valve because that T connector wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Or maybe it was doing what it was supposed to do, it just wasn't doing what I needed it to do. All right, so I put this three-way ball valve ordered on Amazon, it's like $30, $32 or something. All right, so it was three-way ball valve means that water, uh, fluid can be flowing in three different directions, from three different directions, all right? Um, so what I got right here, all right, so look right, if we set it up like this, we got straight water. Because I got water coming from this tank, out of there, boom, 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 to right there, right? So then it comes from there, it's coming from there, then straight down to this hose right there, going to the 12 volt pump, all right? That's if we want straight water, all right? If we want straight bleach or whatever I'm gonna have this drop stick drop down into, Usually it'll be a five gallon bucket right here. Or initially I had it this long because I was gonna drop it into into here, but I think it'd be better that tank right there there will be better served for other purposes. So if I just put um fresh water in it or if I put um reverse osmosis water in it when for when I do my spot free rinse. I think it'd be better to use it like that. And then I'll just like I said, it's just easy so easy to just drop this uh this down into a five gallon bucket or whatever I decide. It could be a 30 gallon bucket. All right, um, all right, so that's, if it's just straight bleach right there, right? All right, so let me get that to focus. What's up? Boom. Um, all right, so, all right, so we start out with water. And then, so I wanna add, um, if I wanna add some bleach right there, this is a 50-50 mix right here, all right? I did a little timing thing earlier with the bucket. And yeah, it takes, really, so if I have it mixed right there, it takes from the time I turn that on and drop that in the bucket, it takes 47 seconds for the soap to get from the bucket to the end of the 130 foot hose, right? 47 seconds to go from water to mixed, mixed water with soap, all right? And then about, it's a minute or some change for it to go back from soap to straight water to start rinsing, right? So I just, I just kind of, so I know how long it was going to take for to have somebody this down. If I'm up on the roof or if I'm somewhere, I can yell back and be like, hey, you know, turn it on or mix it or whatever. And then um, Kev's going to mix it up for me. And I know it's going to be about 47 seconds for me to get soap there. And I know when he I say, all right, straight water, I was going to be a minute and about 15, 16 seconds for me to get water back down that hose, right? All right, so yeah, this is this is basically the number one upgrade right here. I ain't gonna say upgrade, like I say, little little fix I had to do. All right. Um, the other thing I did, all right, so I've I might have had this on there already, but I didn't have this hose. So I had to cut me a little section of hose, and then I put this end on there. And now this feeds the water from the tank will feed right directly into there. If it needs to go to the 12 volt pump. It's gonna be sucked because the pump is on the pump. It, you know, all right. So it's the pump. So it's gonna pump the water out of there. And if it needs to go to the pressure washer, we have that taken care of too, right there. But I think there might not be enough pressure. I mean, not might not be enough suction to go there. So I'm gonna figure that out. So usually, I think when I use the pressure washer, I'm gonna just have the that hose right there that goes to the spigot. I have the other end plugged directly into here. So it'll be pushing water directly to the pressure washer. And it'll be pushing the water to the um, 12 volt pump over there. All right, so that's the second um, little fix I did. And the third one, oh, I got, let me show you my battery bank. Oh, yeah, so the 12 volt pump is plugged up to here. Man, I'm kind of all over the place. Sorry about that, y'all. But a uh, 12 volt pump is plugged up to here. I got the positive on here and then the negative on this one right here. Um, this is my little battery bank. I got two 80 amp batteries here. What are they called? The deep cycle. Yeah, deep cycle batteries. Deep cycle marine batteries. I got these joints from uh, Walmart. 
like eighty something dollars. Eighty six dollars, something like that. Alright, so with this, so what I did to this, cause I was kind of um at a loss for how much power I have by the end of the day, I didn't know. I was just making sure I just come and charge them at the end of the day. So what I did today or last night, I installed one of these. Not last night, uh, yesterday before I went, yeah. I got it in the mail the night before and then I installed it yesterday morning. But this right here, you know, I just cut out a little chunk in this plastic right here and then uh, installed this um, meter so I can tell how much battery life I got left. 77 cents. All right, so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna throw this when I drop this trailer today. I'm gonna throw the battery, throw the charger on there, plug it up. See, that's the charge. I always keep this charger with me, so no matter where the trailer is, I can get power to it. You know what I mean? I always got a tension cord, got a charger right there. Boom. So even if it's a big job, even if the batteries are full when I get there, what I don't want to do is ever run out of battery power, so I'll just have that going if I got a big job. But like I said, the other day, yesterday I ran this, um, I power washed, or, you know, I um, used it to, what a, I spit it out, dude. I used it to um, pre-treat a driveway, a well, very dirty driveway. Used it to pre-treat a very dirty driveway, sidewalk around the house, and patio on the back. All right? Used it for that, and then after that, the same people wanted me to detail a car. So I used the pump to wash the car with also use the um, this inverter to run the vacuum cleaner so by the end of that day you know ended up being this was drawn down to and you know the vacuum cleaner uses up a lot of power right I wasn't able to use my um, compressor so I just plugged that up to the customer's house and shit but this right here was down to 71% yesterday after doing all of that. So, that's good, you know what I mean? I know the vacuum cleaner uses a lot of power, but um, so I, what I don't like it to do is get below 60%. And they say, you know, the research I've done and watching some videos and reading about it, it says that's not a good idea. Um, so with that, man, the, the trailer is self self-sufficient right now right we got power we got water um so if i make sure i load that up in the mornings with my i'll go to my other little store i got my little got a little storage unit over there where i'm processing water so um either in the morning when i, when I know what i'm doing so if i know i'm going to go start the morning out with details i'll make sure i fill that up with um DI water or reverse osmosis water that way you know spot free I'll get the spot free rinse <clears throat> and if not if I know I'm not doing any details there I'm just doing pressure washing soft washing I'll just fill it up with regular water you don't need to waste the DI water on um, somebody's house or something so, so really man it's a, it's a nice little trailer nice little setup it really didn't cost me that much to put together um Hoses, man. The main thing is having the right hoses, the right amount of hoses. So I got that much hose on the hose reel for the pressure washer. And I always keep the spare hose in there. Or when I'm on my truck, I keep the spare hose on the truck. Uh, this is the 100 foot of hose going to the house. And this is the 130 foot of hose washing the house or washing the roof. Alright, and that's the pressure washer. 3.5 gallons a minute, 3,800 PSI, man. It do what it needs to do. It makes that money for me every day. All right. And if I need to, um, and if I need to step it up, boom. This right here. This is what I use for my uh, um, surface cleaning. When I, you know, basically when I'm doing my commercial jobs, right? Uh, even when I'm doing commercial jobs for my vacuum, doing the. Um, Fleets, that's the big vacuum cleaner. But this right here, man, this is this is the beast right here, man. And it runs that, it runs that thing. It lifts it off the ground, right? We gotta hold it down. But this pressure washer right here, this this is the money maker, all right? But over here, uh, this is the everyday money maker right here. This is the baby right here. All right, um, 
All right, all right everybody. I appreciate y'all watching. Now, if you like the video, man, please uh, push that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, man. Check out my other videos. And if you think it's good information, man, you want to share it with your buddies, your homeboy, homegirl, do that. I appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave from DRLS Products and Services, a mobile auto and home wash service, 682-558-3233. Peace.